here's a great solution for automatically filling out metadata columns in SharePoint. We're going to be leveraging AI. It's actually going to just do the whole work for us. Uh, it's all taken care of. All we have to do is upload documents and it'll work. Let's get into it. So if you're like me, you hate filling out metadata columns. Everyone does. Everyone hates fill, filling out all those different fields. It's time consuming. I'd rather do just anything else, really. I'd almost, I'd almost rather do my taxes. This solution is going to be a big time saver, and it's going to have a ton of uses, as you're going to see. We're going to be leveraging SharePoint Premium's document processing capabilities. We're going to be leveraging SharePoint Premium's pre-built models for contracts. We're going to be able to upload our contracts. It'll find all the metadata that we need, extract it all into columns, and it'll, it's just done. It's automatic. All we'll have to do is drag and drop the documents. There's a, there's a few things we've got to do first, though. First, let's jump over into the Admin Center. This is the M365 Admin Center. If you haven't turned on this feature before, then we'll have to do that now. So we go into Setup. We scroll all the way down until we see Automate Content Processes with Syntax. And then we click on Go to Syntax Settings. Now, if you haven't used any of these Syntax, Syntax is the old name for SharePoint Premium. At some point, they'll get around to updating this to SharePoint Premium. But if you haven't set this up before, you're gonna, you're gonna, you'll have a link here to set up the pay-as-you-go billing. You'll have to link this to your Azure subscription and get all that kind of stuff uh, in place because these are uh, this is a consumption-based billing system. So as the more you are using these document um, processes, you, you will be incurring an Azure charge. It's very small, and especially compared to the amount of value you get um, uh, in, in the form of time, getting time back. So once you do this, you'll go down to pre-built document processing <clears throat> because we're going to be leveraging the pre-built models. So what you'll need to do is make sure that this is turned on and then click on sites and make sure the site you want to work on is added to this. Uh, this is my own personal environment, so I have it set to all sites. That's not what you want uh, in, in production because you want to be able to control not only who can use these features, but who can trigger that Azure bill to go up. So if you don't want an expensive bill from everyone trying these features out, you want it more structured, which is what I would recommend. You want to make sure it's only enabled on uh, specific sites. Now, there's an option to here for the default content center. I'm going to cover the content center at a different time. That's more for, that is for enterprise grade uh, uh, things. So if you want your your models, which you you will get into that, but if you want that deployed in a certain uh, place and you want everything to just leverage that, you can. We're going to be doing this in a smaller, more localized way. So I'm just going to ignore this default content center. Now we're going to go over to Contoso Sales. We've got a blank document library here. I'm going to be leveraging the pre-built document processing models, the contract one specifically. And we're going to be applying that to here. I haven't done anything to this Contoso Sales site in, in terms of uh, document processing. So this is going to be the first time setting this stuff up so you'll know exactly what's going to happen when you try it in your environment. So the first thing we're going to see is classify and extract. Now, because we've turned on the, some of the document processing capabilities, whether that was pre-built, structured, uh, uh, unstructured, whichever one you, you happen to turn on, we're doing pre-built this time, you'll start to see this classify and extract. So we're going to click on this, and it's going to allow us to, uh, there's no models that are applied here, So uh, because this is the, the first time we're doing it. So under available, we'll see the option to create a model. So we're going to click on this. It'll tell us a little bit about what this thing can do, uh, what models are going to give you with a document library. We're going to click activate. So we're activating the feature on this site. Now we're going to create a model. And we have different ones here. I'm going to cover every single one of these in future videos. We're going to be first starting with contract processing. Here are the pre-built models here. So with these, what they, what they really let you do is they know what types of information to look for 
in a contract and an invoice and a receipt uh, with sensitive information. It's already set up to look for those specific pieces of metadata. And then all we'll have to do is train it on our documents to make sure it's accurate and to tell it which fields we actually want because we may not want everything here. So I'm going to click on uh, contract processing and it's going to give us a, uh, a description of what this thing is going to actually be looking for. The types of information it's going to extract. We could look down through here. It's looking at party one and party two. Uh, contract title, execution date, that looks pretty good. It's going to capture the key details that we would want to see in a document library in order to quickly find the contracts we want. I'll click Next. So we'll give it a model name. Well, uh, we can call this one, well, we can just call it Contracts, really. Uh, we don't need to get any, get fancy with this. Uh, we could, you could type in a description if you have multiple um, contract models and or, or something like that, and you want to give a little bit more context for the site owners as they are applying models to their libraries. So we'll click Create. So it has created the model. Now we're going to be adding a file so that it can analyze it and kind of um, let us pick what fields we want to extract. So I'll click on Add a File. And now we need to add in files so that it can we can kind of do a test run with this. Now, if we flip back over here and look at site contents, once we enabled the feature on our library, it added some things, including this training files library. If we click on here, we can grab one of these documents, upload it so that it's available for model training. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So we go back to this tab where we are uh, training the model. We'll click Add, and it's going to show us all the files that are in that training files library. So I'll just pick this one, click Add. And so now it's going to take us back to the screen to make sure we have all the files that we want to train with. And we do. So we'll click Next. And now it's showing us the, the contents of that document. It is analyzing the document and finding all the, the matching pieces. Like if, if it's the, the type of contract or the name of the contract, it's going to find it in our document. So this can take a little bit of time, but it will eventually come back to this screen right here where it is telling us all the things that it found and asking if we want to extract this into its own metadata column or just ignore that. Here, I definitely want the name of the agreement. I'm going to click yes. Here's the jurisdiction it found down on page five. So it's adding uh, the jurisdiction. I think we'll keep that one. The party one address. No, maybe not. I, maybe I don't need the address uh, here. But I do want the party name, Contoso. The reference name, I don't think we need this. But you see, it's going line by line. It's identified all the things that the model knows about, all of these different options. And it's letting us pick which ones we want to extract into a metadata column and which ones we just want to ignore. Party to address, I don't need that, but I do want the party name. The reference name, I don't. we don't need this one. And that's it. We've gone through all the fields. You'll see that it was checking these boxes. Uh, so you, we could have closed that window and just clicked on the things that we actually care about here. So here are all the options of what can be extracted based on this document. So from here, we'll click Next. So we've trained our model. It knows what information is valuable to us. Now we need to apply it to a library. So we'll apply the model. And it's already selected the, the documents library because that's the one that we're in. We could have gone here and selected a different library if we wanted to apply this model to the library. Now, what applying the model does in SharePoint Premium is it makes it available in the library and watching the activity in that library. So as you drag and drop documents or as you upload files into that library, the, the correct model is going to run on there and it automatically extract the documents. So we'll click documents. We can look at advanced settings. 
And we'll see some options here for if we want to create a new view, that's the default, creating a brand new view with the model info shown with, with, with our key details. I like this one where we also have like a the thumbnail of the file. It's almost more of a card layout. I like how this one looks. So we'll choose this, click add. So now it's being applied to the library, the model is. Now we can go to the library. Everything looks just like it did before. That's because now we have to trigger the feature. Uh, the model's been applied, and we can actually see that as well. If we go back to classify and extract, we'll see that this, this has been applied. So this was blank before because we, we hadn't applied anything at all. So we have this available. All we have to do is drag and drop some files on here. That's going to trigger the model to to extract all the key details. You see that right here in this, this gray bar that there, the files are being analyzed and we'll see the extracted info in the columns of the library. Now we also see this card layout right here. If we were to flip over to list, you will see it has already created all of the columns that we have told it we want to extract. So all the ones that we didn't want, those columns aren't here, uh, so it's less cleanup for us to, to have to do. We just have the important stuff. So we'll give this a little bit of time. And while we're waiting, this would be a great time to jump in, into my email newsletter so that you can stay up to date with all the news that's coming out for SharePoint and SharePoint Premium. It's completely free. What do you have to lose? Okay, and we're back. It was probably a minute, two minutes tops. Uh, that it took to process all this. We see all of our metadata columns have been extracted. There's there's a little bit of cleanup work that you may have to do. You notice there's a, a trailing comma on the, the party names. So that's okay. That's okay because it saved us a ton of time. If we go back and look at the tile layout, we've got all of our information here and we've got very accurate data. So we saved users time. We've increased the accuracy of this. And maybe if there's a little bit of cleanup, that's that's a, a, a pretty easy ask of someone to go back through considering the amount of time that we've saved them. So what about the licensing? So the licensing with this works similar to some of the other SharePoint Premium features. It is gonna be a consumption-based model. Now, as opposed to the, the SAM licensing that, was, that we needed for the uh, restricted access controls uh, feature that we showed last week, this is not using the, the, the per user license. This is just consumption based. So the more you use this, the more it will cost. But if you're, you know, it, it's a very small amount of money. The pricing is here on the screen. So you can see that that's at least as current as uh, today uh, as, as at the time of recording. Now, there is a promo period as well for this. So until June 2025, you actually can try this out for free. You have a certain amount of, of times you can uh, kind of trigger this feature or you know do the extraction. Uh, I've got that on the screen right here, and there's a link down in the description so that you can kind of get more information on how the pre-built models work. Now, there's a lot of features in SharePoint Premium. I've, I've been covering a lot of these. I feel like I'm barely scratching the surface. I'm, I'm just now getting to these document processing models, and I think they're really fun to play around with. I've made a playlist to cover all these things that I've covered in the past, and all these new videos that I'm making will go into there as well. So click or tap the screen to learn more about all these cool features you've probably never even heard about. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.